and welcome to another Writerly Witterings. Cheers! Today I'm going to talk about something that I honestly thought I had already done some time ago. I'm really enjoying this delightful Opus 88 but in the past, before I had an Opus, before I'd even heard of Opus, I had some other pens which were beautiful and balanced and elegant and made in Devon which I rather liked. I've spoken about one already, the Michael Jex fountain pen from Conway Stewart, which I still think is just heavenly. But today I thought it was about time I spoke about my other two pens, the Churchill and the Drake. So here we go, the Conway Stewart selection that Jex has currently. Let's have a look at them closer. So, what do we have here? Well, I'm not here to talk about the Michael Jex fountain pen, much though I love it, with the Michael Jex signature on the barrel and Detection Club written in the top there. Nope, I've already done a whole thing about that. So today I'm going to talk about these two. This is a Conway Stewart Churchill. Very much a classic design, simple black um, plastic of some sort, resin they always call it, to make it sound much more exclusive and expensive, but it's a type of plastic. And I like the look of it. It's got an old world charm to it, I suppose. It's got the Conway Stewart CS there at the top of the clip. The clip itself is a nice strong one, but I've always had a dislike of this type of clip, I must admit, where you've just got two, I suppose, leaves of metal that are poked through the plastic and then crimped shut on the inside. It always looks inherently weak and a point of potential failure to me, but at least there's no way this would ever come off your shirt pocket and uh, get lost. This one's a special one. It reads there, I'm just going to the camera to zoom in a bit and make sure it's legible. I think that's in focus. Now, hopefully you can just about see, if I bring a light down closer, that it says there, Conway Stewart and it says number 214 of a thousand, Churchill made in England. And that was one of the big selling points for me when I bought it. Because when I got this, it was back in, I think, 1999 or 2000. I had a good set of royalties come in. And I thought I would like to celebrate that with a pen that I can use every day that will be a delight to write with. And I discovered that Conway Stewart were actually based in Plymouth, just down the road from me. And I thought, well, that's very good in terms of the number of miles travelled for it to get to my house. And it would have been had I not had to go all the way in the opposite direction to Sidmouth to pick up the blasted thing because there was nobody else nearer that was selling them at the time. It's a strangely light pen. In fact, I've got a weighing scales here. I'm just going to put it on there. Right, it's 27 grams in total with the barrel and the cap, but with the pen itself, no cap, it's only 16 grams, so very light. If I compare that to my Opus, that's 25 grams, and the Conway Stewart Detection Club is over 50, so a significant difference in weight. The original Conway Stewarts would have had a lever on the side here. There'd be a bladder inside, a rubber bladder, and you'd pull the lever out with your fingernail, 
put it into your ink, push the lever down and back and pump it a couple of times and that would have a flat piece of metal inside that would squeeze the rubber bladder and release it, squeeze it and release it and it would gradually suck up ink. Quite a good efficient way of doing things but um, I think manufacturers lost interest in those rubber bladder type systems because they sprang leaks and people buying pens didn't want ink leaking out all over their jacket pockets. The nib is rather gorgeous, let's just go in on that and it says Conway Stewart 18 karat gold and it's a B, a broad nib. And I can happily state it writes beautifully. I bought this pen just before I became chairman of the Crime Writers Association in this country and it was a delight going to meetings and using this to take notes at all the CWA meetings. It was um, rather to me like lighting up a pipe. It was an opportunity for having thoughts and looking pensive while in fact I was thinking oh dear what are we going to do about the money this time and other thoughts. But the other pen I've got to talk about is the one that really is my favourite Conway Stewart. This is the Drake. Now it is a heavy pen. It's got a weight to it. It's 85 grams. I say just looking at it there. The sharper eyed amongst you will just have noticed that I had to cut there. That's because the postman just arrived and I'm quite staggered. I ordered this parachute cord yesterday at four o'clock on the internet and it arrived today at 11 o'clock. That's really quite astonishing. Um, efficiency. Thank you very much. Right, anyway, back to the Drake. Now, this pen is quite a weight because it's solid silver and you can feel the weight. On its own, the pen's weight is 45 grams and the cap is 42. 43. Now I do like this because as you can see there it's got a tiny little engraving of the Golden Hind which was Francis Drake's ship and that's who this pen is named after Francis Drake. Conway Stewart in the diamond as usual on the clip. The clip itself is just fabulously strong it's almost over tight and the whole of the pen and the cap has this beautiful guilloche, I think it's called, engraving all the way around, which catches the light in a most spectacular way. Here it's got what I think is probably about the cheapest looking thing on the whole pen, which is Conway Stewart engraved by some sort of machine device, probably computerised, and it it just doesn't really work as far as I'm concerned. It's the wrong sort of font, doesn't look very nice, but what the heck, it's a beautiful pen. The nib is about my most... I, I love it, put it like that. It's 18 karat gold again, it's a broad nib again, it has the Conway Stewart label and then it's got the Conway Stewart logo but with that bare is just the gold that you can see there. The rest of it is coated in I think rhodium or something similar. So the whole of the pen looks lovely and silver apart from that one bit of gold that's displayed there. The rest of the pen all silver, cap is completely bare nothing to see and when you open it up it's a cartridge converter. Now I don't like cartridge converters as anybody who knows me will know but this does have the benefit of course that it means you can use any standard ink cartridge any international standard so that is a, a handy feature 
because this is not a pen that I would ever use a great deal. It's something I bought in order to use it for doing silly little things like signing contracts. And it's ideal for that, and because it's such a gushing big nib, broad nib, if I use a standard ink cartridge in it, it really doesn't last very long. If I was to write with this, when I used to go and do researches in the library, I would find that this pen would normally last for about two to three pages, and after that it was completely empty. But those two to three pages felt glorious to write. So I use it for signing contracts, I use it for writing brief notes occasionally, but to be honest, these tend to be three pens that now sit quietly in a nice little wooden box and very rarely get used in at all. Um, which is a shame because they are glorious. But if you look at this, for example, I was using this a fair bit when I was first working at Exeter University with the Royal Literary Fund in their fellowship scheme. And I don't know how well that's being caught there but just here it's got fairly significantly marked now I used to carry this always in my pen case which is an extremely good pen case it's currently owned to two Viscontis but never mind it's a Schaefer leather pen case that I bought at the time I bought this pen and it was purely bought to protect this Conway Stewart but even using that, transporting the pen to work every day and using it at Exeter University, it got scratched and marked. And that's why I never take this pen out. And it's why, when I could, I acquired a Conway Stu... Uh, I apologise. And that's why, when I could, I acquired a Visconti that's made out of lava and will not ever get chipped or marked because this resin that they use is soaked in um, I think it's lava ash from Mount Etna and it is wonderfully strong it just will not get scratched or damaged in any way in fact if you rub this against metal the metal will be worn away by this so the Visconti basically came into my life so that I had something that was really robust and wouldn't get damaged at Exeter University. There's a thing, eh? So why did I actually acquire all these pens? This one, the Churchill, was a celebration because I had a good set of royalties. Oh, I remember those days. And I really wanted something to celebrate it, something that I could use as often as I wanted, and I knew I loved fountain pens. This was subtly different. I used to be a very keen pistol shooter and when pistols were banned and we got a little bit of compensation for when the government took away all our guns, I invested that money in this because it appealed to me. Actually that's a slight shortening of the story. What I did was I bought an air pistol because we were allowed still to use air pistols for target shooting and so I got a very good quality Olympic standard air pistol. But I have to admit, just punching holes in bits of paper at 25 yards with an air pistol is not as much fun as drawing a, a pistol and shooting at reactive targets. So I decided to get rid of the air pistol and I wanted something still to remember my shooting days with. And this is what I came up with. And I thought that is the ideal way to remember my old sport. Something that's made out of metal, something that's fairly precious, to me at least, something that's been machined with precision and feels good. And so that's why this came about. So there you have it. Two of my older fountain pens and still two that I find very satisfying to use. But not pens I tend to use every day, sadly. And then the special one that I can't use because I'm petrified of scratching it, but more or less superseded now by my workhorses, which are the three workhorses, the two Viscontis and the Opus, and then for general work, and which is still probably used more than anything else, 
my little Twisby Go, which is just a fantastic pin. Dirt cheap, but wonderful. All pins are delightful in their own way, and for me, the weight and the feel of that solid silver pen has memories and just feels lovely. There you go. Hope you enjoyed that. If you did, hit the uh, thumbs up sign. Don't forget, there's lots of other videos coming, so hit the subscribe button and then click the bell alongside it, because that means that you get notified whenever a new video comes out. And apart from that, comments down in the comment section, please. And I'll look forward to seeing you again too. Take care. Cheers.